quick enter play information. So if you see here, this is the flow action that we have, right? So in, in this, what we will do is, and if you carefully observe this one, it's at the work level, and we are trying to reference a property which is at the lower level. Okay. So what we're going to do is, we're going to use uh, page context reference. This is a very important concept to understand. So. Uh, if you take a look at this flow action here, you have something called as here using page defined by property. So first thing I will go to this pages and classes and define my PA work page as the uh, type of CK. Then I will give the accident info according to this AIG claim data dash accident. Right? Now this is the data type. Now if I come here to the layout tab, well, use as cards, you have different options. By default, always everyone sets to use current page context, but you can give based on a page defined by the property. So here I will give the page name, page.accident info, and that obviously applies to claim that accident. And here under the section, I will create a section called as accident info. And if I open this one here, here I have created the property for uh, the accident. Okay, so I will give additional things here. Like, so here directly we're going to reference that particular property. So just to add on to things here. So I will give dot nature of accident. Not data class, not widget. Right. And then here, can probably give one more checkbox saying that dot loss of life. Here. Right. So what I did was I created a flow action and at the flow action of the work level, but I'm going to reference the section at directly the data dash accident level by using this page reference like this. This I'm getting it by configuring it here at the pages and classes. Okay. Now there's one more thing you need to do to get this to work. So when the work object reaches this particular point, Rahul, uh, why we are applying this to accident class? Yeah, uh, just hold on, I'm just complete. So the way, reason why we are reaching up, uh, just to get this to work again, we need to instantiate this page before this screen loads. So for that, under the actions tab, we have to have something like initialize accident info. I'll give it something like init accident info. Here all that I need to do is just do an update page of PA workplace dot accident info here, which is again at the data accident class. And then I will need to set the nature of accident or just set some random value and that would work. Say for example, I will say dot Loss of life is say for example I said it as true. Okay. This is something that you know, that yeah, this is in, in this way we are initializing this page and a big uh, using this approach we can ensure that we can reference a property which is in a lower class, a page property reference, which is in a lower class in our um, in our work work pool level, okay. So this I just go over the architecture, the design again. So we have this accident info here, basically the claim and screen flow at the work level. Now within this, we have the uh, flow action also at the same level. 
but under the section configuration, I would say use page defined by property. This page is initialized here under this previous data transform. And here I will give that place to class obviously the accident. And inside this accident info, we'll see this particular screen. Now let's run this just to see how things turn out. See, so let's see clean. Let me do something here. You can see that this thing comes up very clearly here. Okay. Uh, so this is an important concept, a design concept that you have to keep in mind always. That not always you need, not every time you need to have the flow action or the section at the same level. So this same design you can do even for these two steps also, this personal info and policy info also. Okay. You don't need to reference it via the page property directly. Instead, what you can do is you can just enter the values uh, directly there. So, say for example, so say I'm looking down or something like that. And I say car. Okay. Now, if I click the clipboard here. Now I just want to show you the clipboard how this data turns out. So if you see, it turns out in the same manner that we have the customer and policy info. There's absolutely no difference here with regard to the data. See here, it comes up in the same format. So you can configure it to work in the same manner uh, as the way that I showed it to you here using page defined by property even for this personal info and policy info. Now, why we go for this approach is to ensure that uh, we are currently here, uh, honestly, like it was because we were not able to reference the child property, uh, the child class property directly in the flow action, okay? But uh, in real-time scenarios or real-time systems, it's a good practice to go for this approach because here you are going to isolate the class or the data that we are going to get only from this section alone. Okay, the advantage is we can reuse the same accident info section, which is at the claim by the accident at multiple points. We can now reuse the same thing at L claim. We can re reuse it at different implementation applications by just looking at these properties. Okay, so even if you see the out of the box flow action called as add work party, when the, the design there is also in the same manner. Um, so, add party thing. That is a flow action here, yeah, add party. I think. No, I think I, uh, th there are some out-of-the-box flow actions that use the same design. Right? Okay, now coming to the questions. Um, yes, I said I think there was a question, right? Can you come again? I didn't quite catch you there. No, in general, uh, we will create pages for level, right? So here you give a place to class as data class. Uh, here, this one, right? This class. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, uh, there are two reasons for doing this. One, we want to isolate the data classes, the section. If you see the section here, okay, it has only properties of this uh, class. So, in the future, any in, in any of the implementation applications, if you want the properties to, if you want the properties of this particular section to be reused, 
uh, this uh, properties of this particular class to be shown, you can directly reuse the same section. Okay, that's the first reason. Now the second thing is because in our design that we have here, that is, you see here, our work, our screen flow is at this level. Okay, now. Yeah. So our screen flows at this level and this and this uh, accident info is only specific to this C claim. So from here to here to reference a child class, we were if you create a section and then we were trying to reference it, we were not able to reference that. So that is the reason we have gone for this kind of a design wherein if you remember in the initial class we had done the same approach. We had just created the flow action of this work level and then we try to reference the property in C claim. So it is giving an error saying that you do not have access to uh, reference the child properties or it was saying that uh, I think the error was something like rules that prerequisite issue or something. So this is an alternate approach to solve the problem. But in real systems you can find this kind of design many times and this is even considered a good best practice as well. Also okay. for LS, LSA applications, you are supposed to design it this way. You are not supposed to go and create the flow action section directly in the work level. Instead, you can create the flow action at the work level and then you will reference using a page property to that particular data class. The reason is we can reuse the same section at multiple other places. That's it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Alright, I think one more question is there. Is the scenario? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. In, uh, you go ahead, please. Okay. If you create this page in work level, it will work, right? Whatever we have under yeah. C client. Correct. So, correct. If you create this page at work level, this would have worked exactly at this, the way we had here. If you see here, we had this open, um, this policy info flow action was there. We can just directly use that the same manner we used the other ones. Like if you see here. So if you created the work level, it will work the same way as we had for the other flow actions. So we can even have the option like this under this flow action. Here we can just directly enter applies to in this one. And inside this enter policy information, I can just directly show it like this. See here I can just say dot dot page name dot policy name. Right? So we can show it the same way. But if you see here inside this one, I am just directly referencing that property. Because the applies to classes, the data claim accident, claimed an accident. Okay. okay, so I am not using the page reference inside when I am calling the property. Instead, I am using the page reference when I am referencing the section itself. Okay, so this is a, this is a good design concept, design approach to have. So, but the problem with this approach is, I will tell you what's the drawback. The drawback is that inside this enter accident information, you can only put accident information here inside the section. You cannot now reference additional properties from other classes and all that here. So if you need a, a dynamic or a, a section where we have properties from multiple classes, then this becomes a problem. Okay. So just um, just just another um, way to look at this. Right. Okay. So this scenario is using. Uh, there's another question, is this scenario used widely in real-time real -time systems as well? Yeah, this is a practical use case which is used widely in real-time systems as well. So you should know how to reference using page defined by property. You should not use it using data page, report page or anything like that. So those are all like I said, dynamically changing the context when you're referencing the, referencing the section from the flow action. Okay. Right. I hope this is clear for you. Now we will go ahead with the 
attachment category changes that we did in the yesterday session. So we had created something called as an attachment category here. So I think that was called as confidential. This is attachment category. Now if you see if you when we run the C claim case here. Okay. Now, if you take a look at this, you say advanced, and you say add, okay, or say attach a note. Then what I need, I will see here, the like attachment category is note. Now, our intention is to create a new attachment category here and under this, so that we can show the particular attachment as well. So, we can... Um, so we can, this would automatically come up provided we have the privilege colors at the confidential files. Okay. So uh, remember yesterday we had created this privilege at the framework level, class work class. So now what we will do, we will also add this privilege for this particular operator. So in order to add the privilege, all that we need to do is come here to the organ security, access manager, and then the work and process. Now this is a good landing page to take a look at the privileges that we can give for the particular operator. So we know that our current access group for this operator is called as process app code and administrator. Say for example I open this one just to cross check. See that's process app colon administrators. So we come here. Now here you have this thing called as car insurance claim and then claim and work pool. Suppose I open this one. You have the privileges here. Now the question here is we need to put this privilege at the work level. Okay, so if we come here to this privilege, so we will select the role here. So now we clicked on privilege. Now he will, he will give the type of class here, he will give the role name here. So the role for this operator here is, now if you open this access group, you will have something called as a role here. It's called as process app colon administrator. So then we learn a lot about roles and privileges in a subsequent session. But for now, understand that every operator is mapped to an access group and the access group is mapped to a role here. So to, not just to one role, it will be the, for this access group, it is mapped to multiple roles here. So you can give multiple roles here. Okay. So to one of this role, we are going to associate the privilege here. So we have just to know, we have operator, then we have the access group. Okay. Then we have something called as a roles. Just for one, two, and then here we can associate this to a privilege. So you can also give multiple privileges here. Similarly, this can also give multiple privileges here. Okay, so this is the way that it's, it's designed. So let's go to this landing page again. Now, let's go. Yeah, give administrator. Now I'm going to give the case type here as so. Here I can I will give the class name here as accepts this uh, access manager gives this access so then what we will do I think 
This is a new feature in Pega 7 for this access manager. Um, it has some limitations that you see here I cannot give directly the class that I want. This is the class was here at the work level. I'm not able to give the class. So then what we will do, we'll open this role directly here. Okay. Now inside this role here I should be able to see that we will add this class here. So I'll give the class here is W work. So I'll just say read. So there is always a access from one to five. So which means that if you give it a zero or black, it means you don't give any access. You one means you're giving access to the base environment, which will be like a testing or not a testing, like a POC environment. Two is a development environment. Three is two means like you're giving access up to development environment. Five means you're giving access up to production environment, including production. And four is UAT, I think three is four is QA, I think three is UAT or something like that. But either way, here we will give five as a direct access for everything. Okay. Now here we will give the privilege. Just click on the down key. See here, admin of confidential files is available. And I'll give, give that access up to number five. Okay, so remember this is the name that we give. So for this operator, we are giving only this one privilege. Okay. So this privilege has access for everything. So we come here and we give this and we click submit. Okay. Now save this. So just so that we already reached here, I will just, just tell you the way that this access works. So every operator is mapped to multiple access groups. Okay, that is one to many mapping there. Now, so you have group one access group two. Okay, now each of this access group is mapped to so you have say for example if you take one access group here this is mapped to multiple rooms and this is mapped to one role say for example and that role is mapped to multiple privileges Okay, then which is associated to a class. Next, this is the way that it is actually mapped. So this is important for you to remember and understand deeply. So this way that you reference multiple properties, multiple rules between each of them. So we have for one, for two, and then we have here privilege one. Okay. So this is how you have the privilege and access. Yes, yes, security. Okay. So all that you need to do is open the operator as a group and this is how you will add it. So now Pega has come up with this new access manager which totally makes you uh, and doesn't give you access to doing this kind of a design. Instead they will just give you these options here and just directly give the property values here which is 
wouldn't recommend doing it here, but it uh, because security is a key feature wherein you are prone to make mistakes. So using this may uh, just save some time, uh, save you from doing any errors. But uh, but yeah, but uh, it's, it's all right to use this, or you can go for this natural crude way of doing it as well. Okay, I would any day recommend going for this approach because you're trying to understand actually what is happening in the back end rather than wrapping it with a uh, uh, landing page. Because these landing pages have some bugs, I think they are yet to become some stable, stable version. So then we should be good. All right, so now going forward here, so we've added the privilege. Now if you look at this, uh, at this work level, we have this admin of confidential files. So whenever you make a privilege change, you have to log out and log in because the privilege is set during the login time. Okay. So now let's run this. So say say for attach a note. See now I got this option called as confidential. So I would say customer console. Right? Now it's say concern customers concerned about um the safety of this plus Yeah. So you see here it goes inside this category. Now if suppose this is going to be accessed by a user, let's try to access this. The same application by a user. Okay, so say for example um, now then see if um, C hyphen ten. So we need to even. So I'm going to show it in the manager portal to transfer this case. So we can have a case by local action called as transfer. Now say for example I open this car instance stand here. This is user with the This is an out of the box login screens must have been created. Operators that have been created. So we are going to see if there is an option transfer that case to this particular operator and see whether he is able to see the that particular uh, access. So here, instead of attach a file, we will have an option called as uh, transfer So you add it and immediately it should come up in the flow now So let's say here mm, Let's see here And it didn't come up, so you we are not even able to see the attach a file and transfer save for example. Open this Ruby information now. Let's just add it at the case uh, the assignment level. Okay. So we have the local action. We add and then we can get transfer. Hmm. For some reason this is not coming up, I think, is it, oh, okay, I think the transfer privilege, transfer flow action may need some privilege or something. So if you open this transfer flow action, 
this is an out of the box flow action so if you see here the security tab it may need this privilege the privilege here is uh, I think it even shows is depreciated okay all right so it says you need to have this privilege called this uh, transfer and it's going to be allowed only if it's not an internal assignment or something so as of now I'll just delete this so that we can get our option to just transfer the case to the other operator. I think if you go to the manager portal, you should have an option for bulk transfer. It's another way to transfer a case. Mm, I think yeah, this is bulk actions. So let's say create a data process now. Hmm, but I don't think say for example this one here. Alright, so anyhow you will just come here yeah, we'll see have then now. Click on refresh. You see here now the option for transfer assignment came. That's because of the flow action level I had there was a privilege which our operator did not have. So now I say transfer to user. Okay. If you see here, and this user by default currently have nothing. Now we just refresh the list, and you see the case came here now. Now let's open the CF in 10. And if you see here, you can just see the name of this confidential CF in 10. If you, if you, yeah, still gives the option to delete it, but you're not having. If you see here, you do not have the option to open this confidential C10. Whereas here, you can open it. You can just click on this and it opens it. But here, you are not able to open it. So the delete option again, we can restrict it using a privilege. But the intention here is to just show you that you have the attachment category called as confidential, which will not be, which just show as a list here for this operator. But nobody else other than the one with the right privilege can view it. Okay. Now say for example, now this same privilege here that we had. It's confidential. It's not test, just confidential. Now if you see here, there is something called as can view confidential files. Okay. Now to that operator ID, I will add this privilege. So once you give that, it will be visible for that operator as well. So let's go ahead and add it. So user. So this user is, up, is appointed to this. Or maybe we can, yeah, let's give this access group. Now this has a available role. You open the rule and then under the rule we will add this class JFW class FW work. I will give full access for this. Now here I will give this privilege. Give the privileges five. Click submit. All right. Now we're now going to list. Login, and you see here now this it came up like this. So you can click on it and. Uh, some bug there. So 
says new window is not resulting, but now you see that you are able to click on it and at least you should be even able to uh, open it. But if you try to attach a file or say attach a URL or anything, uh, but I think you need to queue the list. But if you say for attach a file, you will not be able to attach under that particular configuration for this confidential file. Because if you see it here to this confidential attachment category, this particular operator can have access only to view. Alright. Okay, so I think uh, that's enough of attachment category and privilege and security. Now going back to our case design. Now the Good next thing. Yeah. So in general, in any application, if user wants to attach any attachments, that should be accessible by that particular user only. So even manager or administrator are also not allowed to use. If that is the requirement, how can we achieve that? So for managers and remaining all operators and admins, uh, what we can say, access groups, we will not give this privilege. And we are giving it to user level, right? Okay. And and if any other user uh, logged in, and if he is also having the same access group, he also can be able to open that case, right? Correct, he can. So how can we um, stop that to access so, using access? So no, no, no. So then there, there's a different, there's a problem with the way you're understanding it. See, you're saying that, see, access group is the main crux of how you're going to secure your yeah, privilege and security and all that. And you're saying that you're going to give the same access group to someone else and then how to act, how to restrict it. Doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, user so access group is the main thing, yeah. which yeah. gives the security and privilege. So if you give the same access group to another person, the design is in such a way that the other person will also have the same access. Yeah, so to achieve that, every user should be having different access group? No. My requirement. Okay, you want only one operator to do something, right? Yeah. So okay. end user wise, okay. or every so end user that, should be. Yeah, so in yeah. that case, oh, yes. you want one operator to achieve something, then what you can do is, on this access uh, role that we have, we have something called as access when and access deny options. So say for example, here, you can give um, there is something called as here instead of privileges you can even give something called as an access when rule so what the access when rule will do is if you check directly the operator id you can write the access when rule in such a way that the operator id is equivalent to this value only then give the access otherwise you don't give the access. Simple as that. Say for example the same requirement if you want to achieve. Here there's attachment category here also. You have here the list by when rule. So you don't need to go for privilege in the scenario which you're talking about. You can just give the when rule here saying that if operator ID equivalent to this value then use this. Suppose here you can you can give any when rule here. You can just create a when rule this operator ID is equal to this ID and then you can give the privilege in mean, security here. Then that will be hard-coded value, right? The, I, then your requirement is not at all clear then. See, See you are saying that you, you oh. no, hold on. Uh, you are saying that you want one operator, each operator to behave differently, right? So how do you yeah. identify that operator? In PEDA, you identify the security of the operator using access groups. And now you yeah. want it only for one particular operator, means you have to hard code the operator ID. No, I am not asking that. Let us say you have your own user, I have my, my own user. Treat it as a banking application. We have some attachments of uh, functionality there. If I log in with my user, I should be able to see my, uh, my user attachments. And you should be able to see your attachments. But if any administrator logged into the development portal, he can see all the work objects, right? So he can work Correct. in any work object. So yeah. I don't want to give that privilege to that administrator as well. If I open with my uh, my user, I should be able to see what are the attachments I have. In the same way, you should be able to see your attachments. Okay. Now, so, you guys, 
Yeah, so you're saying that uh, if the attached, okay, so, okay, then your requirement is that if you log in as a operator and you attach something, you should be able to see only your attachments. Similarly, the other person should be able to see only his own attachments, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so in that case, again, we have, I think, this should help you give that option. All right, let's check that. But that particular requirement, if you want to do, here again you can do use the when rule but the design should be such that the person who created the attachment is the same as the operator id right so i'll show you that so say for example we run this now so if this is here now if say for example we attach some some file here so that's a note Okay, so make it like this. So, now, you are saying that this, this thing, because I have uploaded it, I don't want anyone else to see that. It's, just, it's, a easy, it's easy to achieve that. So what you need to do is, come here to this attachment here. Mm. So you can see here should be a property that tells you who is the person who uploaded the attachment. Administrator. Was it there? Yeah, you see here. The create operator name. So what you need to do is in the when rule that you create for that access, you will just say that the PX create operator name of this attachment uh, is equivalent to the operator ID dot PX create op P P operator name or something like that. You understand? So in this way, we are not going to add code, we are just going to check. We are going to make sure that the person who created the file is the same person who is going to access it. So the conditions being placed in there. In that when role here. So here you go to the attachment. Say so access control list by when role. We will create a when role here and we will add the condition. And here you can give the options by like created it, you or whatever. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Clear, yeah, right? Okay. Right. All right. Now going forward here on cases. Now what we're going to do is. Now we're going to look at something called as a case dependency. So which means that we're going to make the L claim as a child of this car insurance claim. And if the L claim has started, we need to make sure that the L claim waits for uh, the, the car insurance claim does not go forward until the L claim is completed. So for this, if you open this one here, so I have this after the investigate claim, the other option called as check for L claim dependency. So we're going to make the L claim, car instance claim, wait for the child case to complete. Okay, it's a classic example of making, uh, making sure that all the child objects are complete before the parent is completed. So the way to do that is, there are multiple approaches to do this. So uh, the most feasible way is what I'm going to show you now. Okay. So before we do that, we need to make this L claim as a child of this car insurance claim. So for that, either you can come here, open it, and then say give the coverable work types here. Okay, that is one approach. The other approach is, you can just say here, add a child case step. That also does the same thing, it will just come and add it in the background. So you say, existing case type. And I'll say L claim. And then I click submit. And that's all. So that's it. So when you did that, you made the L claim as a child of car insurance claim. Now if you just come and just refresh this, you will see the same thing that that has happened on the backend. See it? Just come now under coverable work types. And so you see here it shows it doesn't show anything now manual or automatic sensation. Those things we can give it here. Now if you go to this one here I think mm 
and that's the entry. No. This is refresh this one, so you should be able to see how to instantiate the child class. Mm -hmm. I think I just need to log out and log in because that is a reference from a data page. You see, now you can understand like the, some of the drawbacks of the data page. Like that sometimes in Pega you are not able to see the latest data because there is a data page reference there. And the data page is still showing the stale data, it's not showing the latest data. So that is the problem. So this is something called data propagation. You want to move some uh, this is some of the feature here. This data propagation. What's it here? This one. So what this does is like if you, now that you have a child case, if you want to add some prop move some property from your parent, this one to child, you can move that. So propagate property value, say, say accident info, and then into something called this, not accident info, say for example, I want to move the claimant info, not customer, okay. So again, I move that to something else, customer then. Okay, so you don't actually need to do this. I'm just showing it just for the sake of showing new data propagation. Okay, so from parent to child, uh, you don't actually need to move a read-only data because this is a read-only data. Unless you're going to make it editable, there is no point in moving a data propagation because whenever you open that child, you automatically have reference to the parent properties as well. So you don't need to do this data propagation until you're going to go and modify that data. All right. Now let's uh, open this. We want to make it uh, what type of instantiation that we want. So we open the case type rule here and the discoverable mark type and make it manual instantiation. Okay. So which means that we can create this particular data thing here manually. So now you can, if you observe here earlier we had both C claim and L claim here. Now we have only C claim. That is because now L claim became a child case which is uh, cannot be instantiated by itself. So children Now what we will do here, we will now run a new, say for example, let's open the older one itself, 11, we have this option here, because now if you see here, we have under add work, early we are getting only background verification. Because I said my own sensation is possible, we're getting going to get this option called as LK. So you click on this. So what this does, you can see here that it immediately created something as a child. So you can see here L hyphen one and C hyphen eleven. So you can see if you open the C hyphen eleven here, you can see that there is a child case here called as L hyphen one. And you can immediately see that we don't have a data here like this correct information. That section is not there. So because this is we have created the section at the at the work level, I can just directly reuse the same flow here. Okay. So what I will do, I will just open this. Now you can actually reap start reaping the benefits of um, a good design actually. Now if you open this enter personal info and then this one, although this is the L claim level, you can just directly enter here. If you just you see here I have this enter personal information here. And all that I need to do is just reference this flow action 
and I can immediately see the impact here. Now, see, just open C11. I open this again. Can you see here? It shows that it shows the section, everything that our order we designed then, and it exactly comes up here. So this is a very good design practice that we didn't need to replicate the same thing all over again. Okay. Now, here what we can do is, uh, now another important information is, what about the data? Can we propagate that as well? Ideally, that should have come up here under this option here. When I give customer to customer, it should have just come up for me, but uh, for some reason that didn't happen. Whether it wasn't saved or sale for this one. Let's check here. It says data application is there. And to customer. Right. Or that sometimes you always apply the data transform because this has some troubles. Say for example, now I go to C X and eleven. I add one more. I see. Okay. I can now add multiple of them. Now let's look at the clipboard here. Is to see if the data propagation actually happened. And yeah, I think you can see here that the page is just there, but the data hasn't come. So essentially, the data propagation hasn't happened. Okay, so it's probably a limitation there with regard to this propagate properties. So I think we have to give something like parent or property. Something. Let's look at the help ones. So Rahul, can we do direct flow action here or we need to do section? Mm, we can directly give the flow action there. No, you mean here, right? This yeah. option. Yeah, we can directly give the flow action here because the flow action remember is at the work level. So all the flow actions we created, all of them are at work level. Because we are anticipating that it will be reused in the other um, cases. Okay. Okay. So I think the data propagation is not happening. So what we will do, we will actually go for an and apply data transform and use it. So I will just check if this is a bug in 719 and if uh, I'll just check out the bug list and probably in tomorrow's session we will do this. Okay. So what we will do now is we will uh, in the life insurance claim, I will we will give this option for this enter disease info review and uh, the other thing is here called as doctor analysis and all this. All this we will do to, in tomorrow's session. But what's important what we will cover is this check for L claim dependency. So what we're going to do here is we're going to see, see learn something called as a case dependency. So first thing what we will do is we will have an entity simply called as a weight shape here. Now on the weight shape, you have this option called as weight type is called as case dependency. Okay, it says wait for any car insurance claim to reach some status. So what we can give is wait for all life insurance claim case to reach a status called as say for example like resolved completed okay so the drawback of using this weight shape is we have to hard code the status here okay if there is another way to do this that is using an all covered result ticket which we will learn in the ticketing session look like further down the line but for now understand that using this case dependency we can wait for all life insurance claim cases to reach this status called as result complete. Result completed. The scope is it? You can just make sure that this is a parent case or top case. It doesn't make a difference. But for a sake of said, we'll keep it as a parent case. Okay. So let's submit. Right. So this is one way to do this. The other way is to use a ticket, but um, this is a new feature in Pegasus 7, and I think it's 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 not a 
the weight chip has a lot of bugs so be very careful when you use it so it doesn't exactly work the way you expect it to work it's all right like there are some bugs and uh, I personally myself have like encountered it this multiple times and even for LSE uh, Pega itself says do not use a weight chip because it's still yet to get stable so the the Pega Academy team itself has said do not use a weight chip but but know that this is an option that's available. So one day, when it becomes stable, you can start using these features in a more elaborate way. Okay. So let's say uh, wait for I think case. But this works. This case dependency works like a charm. There's no problem here. Okay. Say now here. Yes, L1 and L2 and all that. Now let's go to the parent case and after this review information I'll make it so you say something like submit then you have like investigate we will put the section here say advance the case for now and if you see here it is now at this check file claim dependency I mean it's completed this and it's waiting for that okay now now what's important now is we will go to this L-1 and we will complete this case. Say for example, let's just check the things it is all completed. Okay. So now just complete this L-1. Okay, I think there is some security here. Just delete this flow here for now. Okay, now L1 race is all completed. Okay, we have two child cases. And then I move this child also forward. Oops, so error, hold on. So we'll see at 11. Let's refresh this. We'll just see here. So it's think, uh, some, I don't know, some random error is coming up. Let's create this scenario again. So you're in CF 11. CF12. Okay. You add a work like LK. Okay. Then so now we have this is L hyphen three eight. Oh okay, that should have not been the case actually. What a mistake, hold on. So you need to create the first, you need to create the card claim first. Okay, like this. And you finish this. Now you add the L claim as a child case. So it comes up like this. Then now you open the C claim and you move the C claim forward and wait, go to a point where we're gonna wait. Okay, we need to complete these two steps for that. Click submit. Say advance the case. If you see, I have nothing to do on the C claim now. There are no assignments here for the C claim. See here, it's at this point now. Now what I do, I go to this L-4 and I complete this L-4. it has to do with the case dependency. See here the dependency that came creating some bugs. Think the case dependency and how to draw. Okay, let's see when such errors come. Let's see what should be able to make sense of it. So generally you can just look at the stack trace and believe me you'll get such errors all the time in Pegasus.
to should now learn how to rate the stack trace, which is again something I was thinking we'll cover in the session. So this was not the one. Okay. Let's click on tracer and let's trace it and see what is the problem. Okay. Say advance the case. You see once it just completed the second time it had it broke. So let's check here. Yep. You can see here, say error. Yes, there was a fail condition there. Let's check what is the fail condition there. Right, so it says. Oh, it's trying to send some email or something. So, ah, okay. Uh -huh. Problem is here on this car instance claim. It has this, it's trying to run this notify head. So, just need to just. So, here we will just enter some random flow now, something like standard. Okay, just to show you the case dependency. So, now. Okay, now follow my lead again here that we have now C-13 which is now at this step, okay? Now, when we complete this L-4, we expect this C-13 to move forward, okay? That's our intention. So that this should have moved from this one to this one because it was waiting for this l to complete. Now if you open clay advance the case. Okay. Now can you see that L hyphen 4 is under this there's nothing. And if you see here, it has reached this step now. Basically it completed this one as well. So that is about how you in how you have the subcase dependency. Okay, so I'll just run this to you again because there was some things earlier. So you go to you just take a main case. Okay, now on the, on the main case, you now add the child case. Okay, now if you go to the main case, now the main case goes forward as usual. Okay, now there are two works, the child case and the main case. Main case moves forward as usual. It reaches one particular step here and it waits here. Okay, now you open the child and and the child has to become resolved, only then the parent will move forward. That is a dependency. So you see here, now the child is in this step. Let's make sure that it moves to the last step. Now this child is completed and automatically the system took us to this main case and it has moved to this next step here. Okay, so this is how you configure the case dependency in Python. So you can just, the design that we did here was just using this weight shape. It was say waiting for the child case to reach the status and that will uh, ensure that we have a uh, harmless dependency and setup is completely done. All right, so that was it about um, case dependency that we wanted to do. Right. Now the next session uh, we will go ahead and build this complete L frame and this car insurance claim and then basically we will now focus on building the life insurance claim and we will see the data propagation and we will learn about different uh, types of uh, fl uh, fl flow shapes like uh, split for each split churn and all that. Right. All right, so that's all from my end today, guys. Let me know if there are any doubts. If not, I uh, think we will call it a day. All right. Okay, all right, guys. Good day. Then let's uh, meet up tomorrow at the same time. So we will be meeting tomorrow as well. Right. Thank you.